Ken, um, I wanted to let you know, I talked this morning with your sister. Apparently your mother was having some hypertension or some high blood pressure, some heart problems this morning, can't be here today. I don't know if she went to the hospital or what the circumstances are, but I talked to your sister and your sister supposedly is coming, although she was supposed to be here at 8.30 and she's not here yet. It's um, now about noon. So that's, uh, that's the update on things. Is there something you want me to tell your sister or, um, when I talk to her again? Because she's supposed to call me back in a few minutes. Tell us you need to bring my mom up here. Bring my mom up here. I'll let her know, but hang tight here for a little while longer and we'll see if either your mother or your sister can get here. Be on your best behavior. You don't act right in court. No way, the judge is going to trust you to behave in society, okay? Yeah. So sit up straight. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Along those lines there. I'm going to uncuff you guys before we go in the courtroom. Keep your hands behind your back till you get to your seat. I'm going to swear you in. We both you guys can face this wall right here, okay? Stay to your left. You want the left side here? Your sister's here. We can all remain standing. Raise your right hand and answer out loud, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony given today is the truth and nothing but the truth? So help me God? Yes. Please be seated. Mr. Ruck, do you have any witnesses that you'd like to call on behalf of the boys? Judge, I would call Octavia to the stand, please. Ma'am, can you please help the court understand um, Kenneth and Kentrell, who they are as as individuals, are they good kids? Tell us about them. It's the crowd that they hang around, and that's referring to both of them. It's the crowd that they hang around, and I tell them. Are uh, Ken and uh, Kentrell's dad, are they, is, is their dad in the picture? Um, he was until about four months ago. He's incarcerated. And their mother's not here today, is that right? Yes. And tell us what, for what reason their mother's not here. Um, my mom has been going through high blood pressure and she's just been diagnosed with cancer. She was sick last night and I had to take her to the hospital and from that point I have to stay with the kids. So, How many other brothers and sisters do you have? Besides us? Yes. Um, right now there are nine. Kenneth is the one who's really been the man of the house, you know. He's really our backbone. That's all I have. Mrs. Guzik? No questions, Judge. Thank you. You may have a seat back there. Thank you. Judge, I would like to call Ken. To the stand. All right. Can, can it? Yes. Okay. Ken, we spoke yesterday about what the court is here today to decide. That is whether you should stay detained or whether you should be released. What is your opinion on what the court should do? My opinion on what the court should do is I should I should be released because I know I ain't a bad kid. I ain't no harm to nobody. I just made a bad decision at that moment, and I know I did something wrong, but I know I can fix it. Now I know that life is serious, and life is more about me being at home, being with my family, than being locked up. Kenneth, how many times have you been on probation with this court? Twice. Are you on probation right now? Yes. Is getting involved in criminal acts a violation of probation? Yes, ma'am. I have no further questions, Judge. Thank you. You may have a seat back there. Okay. 
As related to Cantrell Pirtle, this is his fourth criminal delinquency. Presently, he has an attempted robbery that would be a B felony if he were an adult. Criminal recklessness, it would be a D felony. That attempted robbery in that it's a B felony tells me that either a weapon was used or a victim was seriously injured. As related to Kenneth Gant, this is his sixth criminal delinquency referral. He's obviously not following the rules of probation. I'd ask that they both remain detained as serious dangers to this community. Mr. Ruck, what else would you like to say today? Judge, the preference in any case like this, when children are being detained, that rather than stay locked up, that they go home. And I would suggest that the court should release them home. It may not be the home that we all think is the best environment, but it's their home. Um. The probation officer has weighed in and has indicated to the court that he feels that both boys should be detained as a danger to the community because of their repeated acts of delinquency. What I'm going to do today is order that uh, they remain detained pending their next hearing. Okay. Any questions? No, Judge. All right. Then this hearings are adjourned. These are two boys, certainly the younger brother who was following in the older brother's footsteps. The oldest boy, six times he's been detained here. Six times. <coughs> and the mom's not here today, and she may or may not be ill. You know, I have no idea. <laughs> There's no supervision, and I think even if today Kenneth felt, I'm going to be OK, I'm going to be good, and I'm certain that Kentrell would have followed whatever Kenneth wanted to do, uh, it would have only been short-lived. Uh, and tomorrow they would be out on the street. They don't know any different. <coughs> If six incarcerations don't change your behavior, one overnight is not going to do it. And I just, I, I just think that there's no supervision there. It was never a choice for me. I do think that eventually um, they will end up hurting somebody, if not themselves. Okay. They both stay in, Mr. Gant. Detain. We're going to Bonaventure. Yes, Judge Yes, and go right behind your son and remain standing for me. Could I get everyone to please raise their right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth? So help you God. Yes, sir. I please be seated. Will you state your name, please? Devin Starkey. And how old are you, Devin? I'm 18. All right. We're here today uh, because uh, Devin was arrested on a bench warrant. It says here that Devin Starkey's whereabouts have been unknown by the Lake County Juvenile Probation Department. Further, that he has failed to attend his court-ordered counseling. And lastly, that he has failed to attend an educational program on a regular basis. I'm going to call you to the stand. Okay? All right. Want to have a seat up here, please? All right, Devin, let's start with counseling. Um, you were ordered by the court to attend counseling, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Did you attend counseling? Um, I had left the home and was trying to live on my own, so I didn't attend from April to June. Well, let's talk about why you left the home. Why did you leave your mother's home? The reason I left is we started getting into arguments. Um, I was getting into a little bit of trouble. I started smoking weed again. And um, I left the home because I was scared that when I did go to court, these would be brought up and I would end up getting in trouble. What were you thinking that was going to happen to this case, Devin? I was thinking once upon my 18th birthday, it would just be dropped. But as the case is, it isn't. As it relates to your arm in a sling, what happened to you, Devin? Um, well, while I was on my own, I was with, hanging with the wrong group of people and got myself into a situation where I got shot. So you are very lucky that you're alive, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. All right, you may have a seat back there. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Monroe, do you wish to call his mother at this yes, time? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Ms. Ramirez, you indicated that you wanted to take Devin home with you today? Yes, I do. Do you think that he learned his lesson this time? I really do. I think that this was a life-changing thing. And I, as bad as to say this, it had to happen with him. 
this scaring him has definitely opened his eyes up to see that he almost died. I almost lost my son. And uh, you had asked Devin to leave your home, is that correct? He was smoking weed, and I know he was doing marijuana. And I have a 15-year-old daughter that's sick, and I can't have that stuff in my home. And I had to give him some tough love. And my tough love was he couldn't come home. And for two weeks prior to him being shot, I think he had realized how hard it was living on his own because he came to me for two weeks begging, Mom, please let me come home, please. He said, I'll straighten up, Mom, please. And I wouldn't let him. I said, no, I can't do that. I can't let you in the house. And then I find out he was shot. But I had to stand my ground. He had to see what it was like in the streets and see how bad it was and how he has things at home that he, you know, is, is there for him. He has a family at home that all of us stand behind him because he has an absolutely great mind. He's wonderful. I mean, he's so smart. And he can do so much if he just turns his life around. The family support in these hearings, or in general with, with the kids, whether it's in the hearing or outside the hearing, is monumental. I think if there was one single thing that I can point to, to be able to predict the success or failure of a young person is the family involvement and support. Devin's had a lot of services, hasn't he? He absolutely has. Sounds like for about four years now, the court's been involved <clears throat> not only with his life, but obviously your life as well. Right. And so he's turned 18 now. You're a family that's had a lot of intervention, um, and, and pretty quickly here, there will be none. We are there to back him up 100%. I do have a lot of family support. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's pulling for him, you know, but he has to pull for himself. Mrs. Guzik? Judge, I'm really torn. Everybody's tap dancing around the shooting of Devin. That wasn't a stray bullet that entered his arm. That was a purposeful act in response to something Devin was doing of a criminal nature. But we also have problems with, he's an adult now. If he sits here for three or four months, I, I don't know what that's gonna do for him. Yeah, I don't either. Because I agree with Mrs. Guzik, 120 days here, you know, if, if two years in placement <laughs> didn't help you change your ways, um, I, I'm not so certain that any more time here is gonna do anything for you. But you know, hopefully getting shot in the arm has. You know, everything happens for a reason, or at least I believe it does. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is, um, you've been here since when? Saturday evening. So for two days you've been here? Today I'm going to grant this petition to modify your probation, and I'm going to order that you be released to the custody of your mother today. Thank you. And I'm going to order that you be released from probation. All right? Thank you. Any questions? No, oh, ma'am. All right. This All hearing's right. adjourned. Good luck to you, Devin. Thank you. You're welcome. I was a little surprised. Um, guess she gave me one last break. If he was 14, I would be doing something totally different, I'm sure. Well, you've got a good break. I know. You know how long have I known you now? Man, you've been coming here since I, you were about this big when I first met you, right? Yeah. About 13 or 14. We've done all we can do, and, and he needs to now begin his adult life and, and accept the consequences for whatever his actions become now in his adult life. Are you going home? Yes. Huh? Hope so. You hope so? Yes. I've been hanging in. I've been praying that day, reading the Bible that day. What's your PO saying? I don't know. Do you got, did they give you a recommendation? Oh, no. OK. What I think would be fair is if she just gave me and my brother one more chance, whatever she decides, she decide, but what I think would be best for me is if she sent me home, my family, but anything but boys' school placement in Lake County Jail.
These are the matters of Kentrell Pirtle and Kenneth Lee Gant. Attorney Ruck is present representing both boys. Your name, please? Mary Gant, mother. All right. All right, call your first witness. Judge, I would call Ken and Kentrell's mother to the stand. Are you able to take Ken and Kentrell home with you today and provide the oversight and support they would need if they were to be released today? Yes. Tell us, how would you be able to provide the structure to your, to your son so that they wouldn't get into any more trouble? For one, I'm going to keep them in the house. Because I don't want to see them out on the streets, and I don't want them to get hurt, and I don't want them to do the wrong things. I've been trying to teach them. But they go out in the streets, and they listen to their friends and get in trouble. But I want them to come home because their brothers and sisters have missed them, too. What do you think that the court could do to help you have your sons follow the rules and the restrictions that you put on them? The house arrest. How do you think that'll help? That way he, he, he won't go nowhere but to school and back home. Anything else you'd like to say? No. That's all I have, Judge. Ms. Gant, why do you think that the court telling Kenneth to stay in the house is going to keep him there? Because he was on house arrest before, and he, he stayed in the house. Well, what are you going to do differently? He's had four referrals to the juvenile court this year alone. I'm going to take control over them. How are you going to do that? I'm going to be a harder parent. So you don't have any plan in action for it to change? You just think it's going to change? No, I know it's going to change. Well, what is the plan in action? I'm going to put my foot down. So you didn't before? You just let them do what they wanted to do before? No, I didn't pretty much let them do anything they want to do. Okay. So I tell them to do the right thing, but they taking them on themselves to do what they want to do when they're outside my house. But so, when they're in my house, they do what I tell them to do. OK, so Kenneth defies you? Sometimes. Okay. I have no further questions. Thank you, Mrs. Gant. Thank you. Mr. Smith, what is uh, your request today? The probation department is recommending that they remain detained uh, and be ordered to complete a psychological evaluation. Uh, there, there's also in the neighborhood, I've talked to mom about this, a lot of gang activity on the street that they live on. Um, and I, I believe that they're affiliated with the gangs uh, out there on the streets as well. Uh, a lot of drug activity as well. I've discussed that with her. So uh, I strongly recommend they remain detained pending uh, the psychological evaluations. Mrs. Guzik, anything else? Uh, yes, Judge. Uh, regarding Kent Trell, Pirtle, uh, the state would definitely concur with Mr. Smith's recommendation that he remain detained here as a serious danger to this community. Um, the attempted robbery charge pending before the court involves allegations that he, along with a group of other boys, were pelting uh, the intended victim with cinder block, trying to uh, rob him. He's a very dangerous person, and he needs to remain detained. As far as Mr. Gant, State also feels he's a very dangerous person. The court's been dealing with this young man since he was 11 years old. He came into the system uh, with a very, very serious offense, shooting, uh, I believe, his brother. He doesn't really listen to his mother. He shows a lot of disrespect for her. And I think the most important thing that she said today was she can't really say if he would cause harm if he was out in the community. And I think that the court cannot take uh, the chance that he may cause another person harm, and he needs to remain detained as a danger to the community also. All right. Mr. Ruck, anything else before the court rules? Judge, we, I guess, agree with the psychological evaluation component of the recommendation, but I would like the opportunity to at least argue that they should no longer be detained while the um, case pens. In fact, his mother is here today and has indicated and will indicate to the court her willingness to um, have her son's release to her today. Well, today, of course, the court will order that both boys have a psychological evaluation. Yes, I'm going to stay here until then. I'll make the boys temporary wards of the Department of Child Services so that we can get those services uh, paid for. 
Um, I know, Kenneth, that you want to leave. I read the letter you wrote to this court about your girlfriend having a baby soon. Um, I'm certain that you would like to be there, as you told me in your letter. You know, I'd like to give you a break here, but in light of this is your sixth referral to this court, four in the year of 2008, the court's going to order that you remain detained pending your next hearing and that you may be a danger to yourself or to the community. As it relates to Cantrell, the court is going to also order that he remain detained pending his next hearing uh, because this is his fourth referral to this court um, and these are serious charges. And for all of those reasons, the court will find that he may be a danger to himself or to the community and they'll both remain detained pending their next hearings on September 5th. All right, this hearing's adjourned. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't like anybody to be in pain, certainly not kids. I mean, I love them. I've been doing this job for 26 years, and the work is heartbreaking. But there is no more work that's more important than the work in a juvenile court. See those guys real quick. Both of you guys know you've got uh, multiple um, serious charges pending against you. My recommendation to the prosecutor and what she agreed to do is that Cantrell, all you admit to is the trespass. You're not going to get into the theft or the burglary or any of those types of things. Um, Ken, for you, um, my suggestion with the prosecutor was, and they agreed with it, would that be you admit to the um, criminal mischief. We're not going to deal with any of the remaining charges for you then at this point. That's all you would admit to, okay? But understand, the agreement is not that if you admit to these that you go home. Our recommendation is certainly still going to be that you go home, but the psychological evaluation, um, the good news is, says that you shouldn't stay here any longer, but that you guys need help somewhere else. So and we're making a big step forward today, so let's at least try and get you guys out of here. Mr. Ruck, have you been served with a copy of the psychological evaluations? I have, Judge. And Mrs. Guzik, you have those as well? Yes, Judge. All right. Are you ready to proceed, Mr. Ruck? I, I, judge, I guess what I would like to do is hear from the probation officer. All right. Mr. Smith, do you want to have a seat up here? Now, since we were in court several weeks ago, what has happened? Uh, several weeks ago, we ordered a uh, psychological evaluation to be completed. Uh, both of those evaluations were completed. Uh, with Kentrell, we did decide that at this time, in the best interest of the community uh, and for himself, that he be placed in a residential treatment facility. And what's the purpose of that type of placement? Uh, hopefully uh, that he take advantage of uh, the things that he needs to become a better citizen and to correct the uh, things that he may be dealing with in the community at this time. With respect now to Kenneth, why don't you tell us about what your recommendation is? Uh, we also agreed that uh, he needs residential placement to uh, meet his needs. You're not recommending that they go home with their mother? Not at this time. Okay. That's all I have, Judge. All right. Mrs. Guzik? I have no further questions. Did you want to speak? Or? <laughs> okay. You want to try? <laughs> I can ask you the questions pretty simply. Lisa. Judge, I'd call their mother very briefly, just for a couple quick questions. Now, you understand that there's a recommendation that both of your sons be placed in a residential placement for the purpose of receiving a variety of services and educational tools and things like that. Yes. What did you want to say with respect to those options? Do you think your kids can come home with you today, or should they? It's for the best. I want them to come home, but if they need help, I agree with that. Okay. You, you just will leave it to the court to decide. Right? Yes. That's all I have, Judge. Thank you, Mrs. Gant. You may have a seat back there. Mrs. Guzik. Judge, there's no argument that uh, Cantrell needs some type of therapeutic placement. The psychological evaluation shows that Cantrell has some significant mental health needs. My problem with Kenneth is that he's committed numerous acts of delinquency. Well, that's what Indiana Boys School is meant to address. And then you factor in 
uh, that he's had counseling provided to him, and he hasn't been terribly amenable to the counseling. He has a track record, and the track record isn't very, very good at this point. You know, it's a serious matter for this court to decide that it's going to invest itself in a child uh, to the extent that this, this county and this court is being asked to invest himself in Kenneth, and I don't see that um, there's going to be a lot of bang for our buck, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I, I think he's a dangerous person. I, I think he should be committed to Indiana Boys School. Well, I would agree that I think Indiana Boys School can address a lot of the issues that Kenneth is facing. Um, but I know this much, if he were in the adult system, he would not be able to receive the treatment and the rehabilitation and the services that the juvenile court is designed to provide to children like Kenneth and like Kentrell. Um, the state and the taxpayers are going to pay whether we send them to the Department of Correction or we send them to placement. And maybe we won't get the bang for the buck as you've described it, but I'm going to still put my faith in the juvenile court system and that I think we can do and do a better job with kids than the adult system can do and going to jail is going to do for him. Um, I think, you know, Kenneth has a, a baby now and I know that he wants to get out of here. He's written me two letters and, and believe me, I would love nothing more than to send both boys home to you, Mrs. Gant. That would be really the ideal thing to do. But I think you as a mom, which is why you're crying your heart out back there, knows that that's not the right thing right now. Kenneth is, is, like, is on the verge. He's on the verge of either doing something really horrible in his life and take him away from you forever, or he's on the verge of maybe being able to turn that corner, and maybe if we hold his hand and help him turn that corner, he'll be able to do that. I mean, that's all we can do, and that's all I can do as a judge is hope that he will hear somebody who can reach out to him to make his life better and him take that advice and do the rest for himself because we can't walk in his shoes. Only he can do that. Um, so today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make him a ward of the court in order that he be placed appropriately, uh, but I will set his matter for review in three months in any event. And as it relates to Kentrell, I think this is a young man that um, probably the juvenile court system was designed for in some respects. I couldn't let him walk away from us without trying to <clears throat> get him to a point where he's at least literate and uh, can function in, in some type of a job. So today the court is going to um, make him a ward of the court in order that he be placed at um, IDTC, which stands for the Indiana Developmental Training Center in Indianapolis. All right, then this hearing's adjourned. Thank you. Man, they don't care about us, man. Ain't no danger to no state, man. No community. Man, man. They don't know us. Oh. I can't do it. Man, damn. Damn. Oh, my God, man. Damn. That's what they wait for. I can't do that. <laughs> Oh, okay. Let's go. <laughs>